Hey guys and girls, hope you're having a great one today. I know I surely am. We've got a beautiful day here in Oklahoma. It's getting close to dark. I hope I got enough time to get this in, but I uh, wanted to do a walkthrough on my brand new 2020 521L Ranger. And one of the great things about fishing for a living is right here. <laughs> I'm just, I, I, how can I say it? Uh, it is amazing how many Ranger boats that I've owned in my lifetime. I bought the first one in 1968. It was a 69 model. And uh, but and I've had I don't know how many every every you know not every year since but in the last several years maybe 20 or 25 or 30 years I've got a brand new Ranger boat every year and and uh, we I, I even after all those Rangers I get excited every time I get one and I don't take it for granted every one of them has had one of these big black guys on it now not just exactly like this one because this is the new Mercury V8 the new Pro XS and this is a V8 engine a four-stroke engine you, this is not. Uh, and a two cycle like where you mix your oil and gas mixes together uh, this is a regular v8 engine and it is absolutely awesome i mean it is awesome uh, this boat the 521l runs about five to seven miles an hour faster with this motor on it than it did the the original two-stroke uh, pro xs optimax that we were running this is a 250 horsepower engine so this boat runs about 73 miles an hour with this on it which is about seven miles an hour faster than I ran uh, when I had just a regular Pro XS. And that was an incredible engine, there's no doubt about it. But what they've done with these engines nowadays are just phenomenal. They get better gas mileage. The torque is amazing. You jump up on top and take off immediately. And uh, they're just absolutely incredible engines. Uh, they, the, the fuel economy is amazing. Obviously you burn a lot less oil and oil's getting up now where it's uh, 20 or $30 for uh, not a barrel of oil, but a gallon of oil that you're going to put in the outboard. I've got a, uh, a Mercury Fury. This is this is a Mercury Fury prop on it. It's the best motor that they run. This is a 23 right here. Now you know, we run 23s, 24s, 25s. This is a three-bladed prop, and it's made to be able to get that and jump it up there real fast. 23 is going to turn a lot of RPMs. Going to get a lot of speed. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, while we're back here, got two power pole, pole two power pole blades. And uh, these are the blades. This is like the best of the power pole units that you can get. Uh, both these are coordinated where you can run them separately, one or one, two. We obviously put both of them down anytime we put them down. And uh, these are regular eight foot poles. I ran the 10 foot poles a while, but to be completely honest with you, I didn't find a whole lot of instances where if I could not power pole down in eight foot water, I couldn't power pole down in 10 foot water either. So I went back to the eight foot poles. They look a little nicer on the boat. They fit into my building a little bit better. The 10 foot just barely touched the top of my building when I went in. I'd, I'd actually get right here to back in and I'd put them down just a little bit where it, where it, where it didn't do anything, but it just sort of touched the top of it. Just barely, 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 barely did. But, uh, but you two power pole blades. You know, there's a joke out there among tournament fishermen. We see a boat going down a lake and it's only got one power pole on it. You know, it's not a pro because pros all have two power poles on their boat. And I'm seeing more and more and more boats with two power poles because they do so much more for you than if you just had one on. All right, that's the back end of the boat. I don't know anything else I need to tell you back here. Uh, you know, Ranger, of course, have been using these kind of tie downs for years, the tie downs, you know, when you get ready to unhook them, you just, you push the button down here, that you crank it up to get it. You wanna, you wanna turn it loose, you push the button down here. Where's my button on that thing? There it is. It's actually a lot easier than that if you're smart. <laughs> Push the button and those go right back in. So you don't ever take them off. You know, we used to have to put tie downs on and you'd have to time you'd leave them hanging on. You'd lose them. You get ready to put them back on. You couldn't find them. But these tie downs stay on your boat trailer all the time. So that's kind of a neat deal there. The rigging, if you'll notice, is just absolutely sleek nowadays. You don't see, look at there, you got all that. You don't have a splash wheel like you have in some boats that we used to run. And the good thing about that is it just doesn't get all full of dirt and grime and just be a nasty part of your boat because you just wash this off just like you wash the rest of your boat. This is an access panel. Uh, if you want to get back in there to the back to get back down to something, to your pumps or something like that, you take this off right here and you've got a big hole right there that you can access anything down there to work on. I've got an Atlas jack plate on this. Just happened to look down and see that. I about forgot talking about it. This is an Atlas access jack plate. It raises up and down is what that does. So it raises your motor up and you can see I've got it way up right now for trailering. I put it way up for trailering. Uh, you're going to run it down about usually about four inches where I run it. And uh, you see how sleek and neat everything is back here. This is like 
totally different. This is uh, my receiver for my Garmin Electronics with a GPS right here. That's what that is right there. And uh, I've got three Garmin locators on it. I'm going to crawl up here in the boat. We'll start talking about what's inside of this boat. When you look at this, you'll see things that are really not on a lot of other boats. We call that the Ranger Advantage is exactly what we call it. Uh, but uh, when you get in here and start looking around, you just are kind of amazed at what it is. All of the, the, the tie-ups that you have here for the side, they're, they're, they're set where you can just pop right up just like that. And the, the advantage of having those where they pop up and then when you stow them, you just pop them down, is that you have a rod. If you've got them in the up position, like when you're tied up, you have a rod slide down under that and you pick a rod up and you break the rod. Uh, the old ones we used to have, uh, I broken out on how many rods that way. On this, you got them down until you need them, so you can lay a rod down, it goes right over the top of it. Not any problem whatsoever. Let's take a uh, real quick peek back here at the what we got back here. And now you can see how much room we have. That's because all the pumps and everything are, are down out of sight and out of the way. And uh, you look back there and what you see back there is a lot of batteries. You see a big Minn Kota four bank charger. And I've got five batteries back here. You see five big super start batteries from O'Reilly Auto Parts. And uh, the reason I've got five is we have so much electronics on these big fancy bass boats nowadays that, uh, that really and truly you, you just got so much power being drained that you need to have two batteries running all of your electronics. And uh, so I've got a couple of these uh, heavy duty Superstar AGM marine batteries. And, and if you need a marine battery or any kind of battery, but for definitely if you need a marine battery, I wouldn't even consider anything but an O'Reilly Superstar. But I've got two of the batteries back there that are, that are wired together. So it makes just one big Super 12 volt. So I can leave aerators running all day uh, in a tournament. I can, you know, if I'm out there crappie fishing, catching a lot of crappie and putting them in the live well, I can leave those running all day. I'll never have to worry about my batteries running down. Four bank charger, I've got them wired where they're charging all five batteries, obviously, since that's just one big super 12 volt, so I've got that wired. So when I turn that on, that is charging all five batteries. Anytime I plug it in, it's got a plug in, if you'll notice, just right back there. Oh, there's something else I should have mentioned back here that's on a Ranger boat. This is, this is where I plug it in. All you need to do to charge all your batteries, that's it. Just, just back it into your boat building, pull it up to your house, your hotel room or whatever. Plug that into electric and you're charging all five of your batteries. All five of your batteries. Here's something else right here. This is the drain plug. You see what it says right there? Drain plug. I've got it in the out position. To put it in the in position, to put the water, boat in the water, that's all you do right there. Just move that switch. That's it. And uh, you don't have to crawl into the boat, put anything in, screw it in, take it out, anything like that. And so once you load your boat out, turn that to the out position. That's going to drain any water that's got down into your boat. You've been out there on a rainy day, whatever, it's going to get it all out. And, uh, and I, I leave it in the out position most all the time. Some guys just leave the live wheel in all the time, but there's no need to do it in the new Ranger boats because you can, you can do that right there. Uh, the other thing I was gonna talk to you about back here in this back end, let me just open that back up again, is this situation right here. Uh, this is a Ranger innovation. Rangers innovated most of the things that have come around in bass boats. And uh, this allows you to turn your boat to the off position. And when you turn this switch right here over, the, I'm not gonna do it because I got my interior lights on. You turn it to the off position like that and every, all the powers to your boat's turned off, all the power. So if your grandkids come over and you put them in the boat to let them and they start punching buttons and turning things off and on, doesn't matter, just let them do it because the entire boat is turned off. Turn it over to the run position and you can run. Now you see this right here, it says jump start. A lot of people, if you only run, I don't ever have that problem with these O'Reilly batteries, but if you run a 112 volt and all your electronics and you have your battery go dead, you can't, your motor won't start, all you do is turn it over to jump start and it jump starts the engines, transferring that electronic to jump start your engine through your trolling motor batteries. So you just don't ever have a situation where your motor won't start because of, because of your battery being dead. Uh, you can turn that switch and it'll let, and, you know, it'll let it start it. And, and we had that problem occasionally back before we, uh, uh, we changed to these really, really good batteries. And then also uh, we had that problem with running so much electronics, only running one battery to run all those electronics. And now we run, you know, like I said, now we run kind of, that's kind of a super 12 volts what it is. Uh, these are big live wheels. These are two big aerated live wheels. These live wheels, uh, if you look down in there, you'll see this has got an oxygen system in it. So in other words, you're actually pumping oxygen in, oxygen in there. If you're out crappie fishing, catching a big mess of crappie, obviously in a tournament, it's really, really critical to make sure that you have that oxygen running. 
and it is creating oxygen. It's making oxygen right in your boat. And your fish are actually have more oxygen in a ranger live well than they do swimming around out there in the lake. It's kind of an amazing situation. But, uh, and it's got a pump out system. So uh, if you're in a tournament or you come home, you want to pump the water out. You got water you've left in the live well. Maybe you forgot to pull the, uh, the plug on these. And you do that with a, with a slight switch too. We'll show you that here in just a minute. But uh, so you forgot to do it. And so uh, uh, you can actually pump the water out. And in tournaments, what we do a lot of times is we'll hang our weigh-in basket over the little cleat that I was talking about a minute ago, hang it there. And then we'll, we'll, we'll pump water and it'll pump out fill it about half full of water, hang it right there, and then get our bass and put them, put them in there. Uh, we do that if we're on the trailer. If we're, if we're out in the water and at a boat dock, you know, I put it down here in the boat. I don't want to take a chance of you losing a fish. It's too hard to come by out there in a tournament. Uh, the storage boxes, <laughs> storage boxes on Ranger boats are absolutely unequal. This is a brand new boat. I hadn't put anything in it, and I, I wanted to do the walkthrough before I did just to show you because once we get these things full of tackle and everything we put in them, and we load them down at Holly, we put so much stuff in. I want to show you just how big these boxes are. You can't really tell when you get all the boxes and tackle in there. But they got two of these on, on each side, one on the other side, one on this side. These are your rear storage boxes. Uh, they've all got a, a, a rubber mat in the bottom of them. They've all got a drain in case you get water in there. The water will drain out. Uh, it's got lips up here on the side, a little compartment where you can lay things up there. I like to put some little small plastic tackle boxes up there. Maybe it's got slip sinkers or hooks or something like that in those type of compartments or fishing line. You got a, a box just like this over here on the other side. Now, this is identical, exact same thing. And uh, it's got the little lip up there too. So that box is exactly like this one. Ranger boats come with, uh, with this little bucket and it is full of goodies. It's, you got wax in there and uh, you got some uh, stuff for your engine. And it's, uh, it's really, really kind of, it's just great stuff. I mean, they got a lot of good stuff in there. And the buckets are good buckets. We keep the buckets. I'm a bucket guy. I like buckets. I need a bucket sponsor, as a matter of fact. We have so many, so many buckets. But, but anyway, that's a, that's a great situation there. And the reason that that's laying on the side, because that bucket is too tall. The locking system on Ranger boats is really, really sensational. They fit so tight and down, it's just amazing. The key locks on all of them, great key locks on them, and you can either loosen them up or tighten them here very, very easily. It's an easy double nut situation, lock nut situation, where if you want them a little looser, a little tighten, it's very easy for you to do that yourself. It doesn't take any skill at all. So, but they come from the factory. They're all extremely tight, and they're that way in order to keep a lot of water or anything from getting out into that thing. When you get here to the, uh, the console area of the boat where the, 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 you're going to ride, where your passenger's going to ride, uh, you'll notice that you got a couple cup holders, one for you and one for your passenger. You also got two cup holders in the bottom. So you've actually got two cup holders for yourself, two cup holders for your passenger. This is a great little box right here. This is not a very large box, but I use this. I, I put my gloves in here, so I, if I get out there and it gets really, really cold, I've already got a pair of gloves. I'll put a you know, a couple, two or three uh, uh, hand towels in there. And usually a rope or two. I keep in this a small rope in this compartment right here. It's actually, it's a pretty good sized compartment. Uh, here you pop that up right there and you've got a couple of, uh, of a SU, uh, what are those things called? Uh, SUB, uh, SUB is a Suburban. <laughs> a USB port, that's what that is, a USB port. <laughs> I don't know what the IMCA is and that's about it guys. <laughs> But you can have two USB ports right there. You got a couple of them so you can plug in right there to, to uh, ch charge your phone, which is an important thing for everybody nowadays. It doesn't seem to matter. Again, you got the lips on here. This is kind of a, a, an amazing thing about Ranger boats. They've got lips around everything. And, and I'll tell you, gang, it's just to keep the water out. And it works really, really well. And if you look right here, you see these two little deals right there? Those are two little drain ports is what those are. So if you get water that gets down in here, it drains out right there and doesn't get down here where you got all your stuff. This is an extremely dry case, extremely dry. Great situation right there. All right, let's look at the cockpit. The cockpit is absolutely amazing on a Ranger boat. Uh, for one thing, you'll notice here, lots of room. You see this? I mean, lots of room. I don't use a hot foot because a lot of times I drive a boat around where I just stand up, put it in gear and idle from one spot to another. I do that a lot. But you have a tremendous amount of room, a lot of room. A Ranger seat, look at here. It's got a slide on it, so you look how I slide it up. If, I, if it, you got long legs, you can slide it back like that. If you got short legs, you can slide it up. 
or if you want to get up here like you know you're running a tournament and you're really up here really concentrating it's got an extremely big console to hold the locators this is a 12 inch garmin i've got a 12 inch there you can see it'll hold a 15 inch probably next year i'll use a 15 inch the units i wanted to run this year from garmin uh they didn't have the 15 inch quite ready to go and uh, but all my units are integrated together. I only run one back here on the console just because I can quad screen that, split screen it, up or down or sideways. I can do whatever I want to do that. This will do everything I need to do without having a locator sitting out here on the side. And it helps me. I fish a lot of brush and trees. I'm going to scratch this baby up. You know that. But uh, it helps me not having a locator out here at the side. I, this is the second year I've run with only simply one locator up here. And that'll work just fine. That'll work just fine. And these are expensive units. So, you know, those are $3,000 plus units. So, and uh, I could get another one, I think. But, but I just, I like it better by not having one over here. And it gives me a little bit better viewing run down. You're running down the lake 70 mile an hour. You really need to be able to see. If you'll notice, I have two consoles on the boat. Ranger boats are built where if you have two consoles and somebody that buys this boat, whoever I sell it to after I use it this year, if they only want one console, and some tournament fishermen do, because it's another mile or mile and a half per hour, they only have one console in there, you can take that out. Or if you have a, a Ranger that's only got one console, you can get another one to add on there. So if you buy a Ranger boat from anybody, uh, an individual or a Ranger dealer, and it's only got one console, you can actually buy another console from Ranger. And the reason I have two consoles is very, very simple. I'm married to the same woman I've been married to forever. <laughs> She practices with me at tournaments, or she did up until this year. One of the reasons that I'm not fishing tournaments is they made a rule where you couldn't take your wife or your, the women couldn't take their husband. Uh, I don't know if there are any women fishing at the top level in, in BASS or FLW or MLF now. But uh, you, can't, uh, you can't take your, 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 your wife with you. You can't take your son or your daughter or your cousin or your uncle or your mom or your dad. And they made that rule. And Chris has practiced with me since I was teenagers. I practiced with her at the bass and gal tournaments and uh, and it just would take the fun out of tournaments for me and i fish them for fun uh, so that's one of the reasons we're not fishing tournaments but we rigged the boat for a tournament though because we didn't really make that decision till till late december so uh, uh that's the reason we rigged it this way but uh, but you got all your gauges right down here you know you got you got your your, your water pressure gauge you got your fuel gauge you got your tachometer uh, obviously you got your speedometer right here in your Garmin locator uh, and, and, and these things will just, well, you know what, what they, they do everything. They're just amazing. Uh, everything is real simple down here. There are keypad start. There's no keys. Uh, you know, you just punch your numbers in here. You can set this keypad. You can set this keypad right here and, and have whatever code you want in there. Uh, you know, most Ranger owners just put one, two, three, four, and that's it, you know, and, but, uh, but you can do whatever you want on that. You got all your controls right here to run all your accessories to run your, your bilge pump. And, and this boat's got a, an automatic plus a regular bilge pump. So if you're sitting in a dock and it starts raining and you're back to the hotel sweep, sleeping, and it comes a five inch rain, it's going to automatically pump it out. Uh, your live weld switches right here, all of your accessory switches to run extra lights and stuff. You'll notice I've got interior lights in, in my boat. Um, I've actually got blue lights in those power poles. Inside the power poles, I got blue lights like I've got inside. So out there in, in early in the morning, and those blue lights are inside that uh, frame on those power pole blades. And so it gives a beautiful blue glow. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And these blue lights inside are amazing when you're out there before daylight or, or you're loading out around dark or whatever. It's just like, I just love those. Those are blue water lights uh, by T&H Marine. And, and I, I put them on every boat, the tracker boats, as well as the Ranger. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got my, a trim up here. I've got a trim up here on the console so I can trim it up this way. Also, you got a trim on, on this right here. I've got a trim also to run, run my, uh, my, my jack plate back there, my Atlas jack plate up and down. So I've got those two trims right, right here also. I've got a switch over here to run my power pole so I can run my power poles from right here with no problem at all. I can change the speed. I can change the uh, dynamics of what I want those power poles to do all right here on this switch. Now we've got remote controls. Also, we'll show you some buttons up front too, but I've got that right there for my power pole. I've got a Mercury Smart Gauge on here. This Mercury Smart Gauge is right under that. This Smart Gauge will tell me everything I need to know about that motor. Uh, now, you know, we, we, also, we also have a, a, an instrument hooked up there where we can, you know, look on our telephone and we've got an app, uh, Vessel View it's called. 
And on that vessel view app, we can tell how many hours are on the motor. It'll tell me about any maintenance that needs to be done. It'll tell me it's, it's got a GPS on it. It's just amazing what all that'll do. This smart gauge will tell me everything I need to know about that motor back there also. But I can do that on an app through my vessel view. And then the vessel view is an accessory you put on that motor. I just install them myself. They're $300 or $350 or something. I don't even know exactly what the costs are, but they're, they're worth every penny of it. But, uh, but anyway, this is what you've got on your, on your console. Uh, if you move over here to the passenger side, and this is a great situation on the passenger side. One of the things that you have on the passenger side, you got a handhold down here. The reason you got this handhold, 73 miles an hour. Do I need to say more? <laughs> when you are bopping along out there at 73 miles an hour in this, uh, uh, this Shell Rotella or Shell Rotella gas truck Ranger, when you're, you need to hold, hold on to something. You got handholds up here so that you can hold on. You got places down there to put your feet. You got, a, you know, like I said, a handhold here. You got a handhold over here. Hold on. If you're with me, hold on. Sit down and hold on. That's all you need to do. That's what it's all about. Uh, it's got a great, great uh, glove box in it, the glove box. Uh, this, has got a, this has got a couple USB ports. It's also got a cigarette lighter plug-in in there. Where if you want to plug a spotlight or something like that into it, or maybe you got a, 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 you know, a charger for your phone that's on a, on a cigarette plug-in. But whatever you want to use here. I know not many people smoke nowadays, thank goodness. But uh, but you got a real, real nice, uh, real nice glove box system in there, and it's always been. They just make that better every year. Uh, and like I said, the console, this console can either be in or out. I mean, you can you can take them out. I've taken them out. I've I've added consoles to the boat. They work very good. Your passenger out here has got a place for the rod butts to go down here to go in here. The rod's right, right right here. It's got a strap over here where you can strap that down. So actually, if you want. Uh, when you're going fishing, like I'll, I do a lot, you know, you go fishing, you leave your boats laying, your rod and reels laying in the boat. I don't even take them out. And the rods that's back here, you just strap them down. You can run down the highway at 70 mile an hour and never have to worry about losing a rod. Make sure you got this strap on them though. Make sure you got this strap. But uh, like I said, you got drink holder here. You got another drink holder down here. So it's a great, great boat for the uh, passenger. Uh, you got drain plug here in the bottom. This drain plug here in the bottom uh, is in, if you're in real heavy rains or you happen to be in really rough water. And sometimes when we're in this rough water, and you've seen it happen on television, then, where you'd be out there in big five, six, seven foot waves, and the boats come up and they're riding those waves, and, ride, and all of a sudden the driver makes just a little mistake or a wave pushes in from behind, and you torpedo through a wave. And when you do, the world goes black on you. I mean, you're underneath the water. It's just like a submarine, except you're in a Ranger boat. And it goes under the water. And when that happens, this boat fills completely full of water. I mean, it is full of water. You saw, and it, it's got, the, it's up on the, and, and things are, and, and this drain plug is a big, big, I mean, drain spot right here in the middle is a big drain spot for one reason, to get that water into the bottom of the boat. The, it's got a lot of room in the bottom of the boat. Get that water down there and an automatic bilge pump will come on because in that situation you have both bilge pumps on <laughs> and you're going to wish you had three or four bilge pumps because you want to get that water out fast. I've been on Lake Ontario and some of the great lakes up there and speared three or four of those waves sometimes trying to get back to a way in and it just takes your breath away when it happens. You lose your high dollar sunglasses. These are like $35 Jimmy Houston sunglasses. Uh, but uh, but you, you, it's just amazing. Sometimes, you know, packle boxes float out and everything. So, but it's real important if you do that to get that water in the bottom of the boat where you can bilge it out real, real quickly. All right, let's get up here to this fun part of the boat. And a fun part of the boat up here. Now, this is a, a, it's a step up to help you. You know, that's a long step from there to there. So it's a step up, but it's not just a step up. It's another box. And this is actually an insulated ice chest. But, so as you see the drain in there, it's drained down the bottom of the boat. So you put it ice in there. And, Throughout the day, it melts a little bit. Uh, but I use this box actually mostly for a storage box. And tournament fishing, I might use it a little bit more for an ice chest, but it just doesn't hold all the stuff I want to hold. So I use uh, the other ice chest that's in the boat, which we'll talk to you about in a second. You notice, you see, everything's got the, the this is, again, you see this right here? Water gets in here. It's going to get in the outside. If you've got tackle down in there, which I've got tackle in here. I will usually put the stuff in tournaments in this box that I'm going to use throughout the day. My extra spinner baits, my extra worms, some extra hooks extra lures, whatever I might be intending to fish with. Now, I got a lot of other tackle in the boat, but some things that I know that, like if I'm using 
uh, an original American original deep smoothie in a certain color I might have two or three extra spares in this box right here so I know I can get to them real real quickly if I'm using a certain color Jimmy Houston legend spinnerbait I might have three or four more right there you know and I might at noontime change change to a brand new one just to have a brand new one on uh, even if I haven't lost anything but anyway, so that's what I use this box for in tournaments you can use it as a nice chest that's what it's built for also uh, this is uh, another great thing right here. Obviously, those are for your tools. You've got different sizes you can put down in there, your pliers, your scissors. I use those little Bass Pro Shop scissors that are really great, cost like five bucks. But uh, you got one on each side of that. And this is a, uh, a Ranger deal right here that's just fantastic. Tournament guys, there's your measure board right there. Out to 18 inches. Some of you walleye guys are laughing at me right now, but that's all right. I know when I get a bite. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but that's a great deal right there, so your, 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 uh, your, your deal's always handy. Oh, I didn't show you this back here. Well, I should have shown you in a minute ago. This is where you put your dip net. You see that right there? Oh, I got my finger in there. It's like sticking your finger in a northern pike. But, uh, but you stick your handle of your dip net right there, so your dip net is laying here on the bottom, and you can drive down the highway like that. You can drive down a lake, and, and uh, you stick your dip net handle there, and it goes back up under here, underneath this box here, and that's where you carry your dip net. That's another ranger innovation that's the part of the ranger advantage right there a dip net placement all right let's walk up here you notice my blue water lights you know i mean i love lights i've been running blue water for a long time and now that company's owned by tnh marine and uh, those are just absolutely the best you know led lights to buy i'm talking about ice boxes let's just open this one first and there's the ice chest that i use because uh, my camera crew will go and fill that thing up with ice and drinks and it'll be empty at the end of the day. That's what my camera crew does. Uh, you got this little part up here, you can put your lunch meat or something up there. And, and these are all insulated uh, ice chests. They're not just, you know, built in ice chests or whatever, flopped in there. This, they've got insulation blown all the way around them. You know, Ranger boats are full of foam. They won't sink, they won't turn over if they, you know, they, they, you know the, the foam flotation. I mean, that, everybody knows that about a Ranger. Uh, all of these have got, got shocks on them, so when you pick them up, go to pick them up, you know, they open up and, and they don't flop back down on your hand or anything like that. You got drains in there again that drain down into the bottom. Uh, the lids, again, you can adjust the tightness on those real, real easily. Some of these, like this one, does not have a lock on it because somebody gets into your boat and they're thirsty and they need to have a Coke or a, a, a energy drink or a water, let them have it. Go ahead and let them get in that box. Don't lock it. Don't lock your ice chest. Uh, over here, let's just go keep going over here on this side. This other box over here, this is a rod box. And buddy, let me tell you, that is a rod box. <laughs> that is a rod box right there. This most brand new, it's just my Garmin box is in there. But if you'll take a look, and I've got my, my seat in there. But if you look at the size of that, and these are all where you put the rods up here. That'll hold uh, one, two, three, four, seven, nine, ten rods in this one rod box. Now, it'll actually hold... 20. Or if you're Tommy Biffle, it'll hold 30. <laughs> uh, it's got the rubber in there and everything. So this is a vent system in a Ranger boat. Uh, Ranger boat has a ventilation system that will actually dry any moisture out that you get inside of, you know, from condensation or a foggy day like we had this morning. You turn that vent on and it'll dry everything out in here and keep your 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 reels from getting uh, condensation down in them or anything in here from rusting. It's just like that is what that is right there. That's not a loudspeaker system. That's, a, that's your vent system. Uh, back here where you got the tail end of your rods, your butt ends, you got a place to put every single rod that's in here. Uh, so you got this back here. You got a place for a dozen of them there. I thought it was 10. One, two, three, four, seven, nine, 10. And you got a place there to put, uh, yeah, you got a place there to put 12. So you got, you got 12 reels, three, six, nine, 12. That's exactly right. But, uh, but, you know, so you can drive down the road, they're not banging together, mashing together. You know, a lot of the rod and reels we got right now cost an awful lot of money. Jimmy Houston Legend rods are less than a hundred bucks, but a lot of people out there using stuff that cost 500. All right, I'm just gonna lay that back here right now. I'm gonna stay off of this right now. Just look at the other side. This is the storage on the other side. And now this does not have, this does not have the holder up in the front where you stick your rod in, but it's still got it in the back. So you can carry another 15 or 20 rods over here on this side. You can see I haven't cleaned everything out of this boat. It's brand new, has not been wet, absolutely brand spanking new. And uh, so I still got some of the stuff that came from uh, Jimmy Houston Marine over there on, in that. 
Again, it's got the vent system. The vent system is all these boxes up here to dry these, these out in case you have any condensation or you're out there in a day where it rains all day long, which we have happen in the tournaments. All right, I'm gonna open this big bad boy up. And woo, let me tell you, now, and there's all my boxes that all my Garmin look, uh, electronics was in and everything, and I don't know what's going on here. That's my transducers since we changed transducers out. Those are still in there. I got all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, one of the things about when you trick one out like I trick them out, you have, and these, and I, I hang on to these boxes because I sell this boat after a year and I want to make sure that the new owners got all the warnings and everything like that. Now, you notice something that happened when I opened that? This is, this is cooler. This is slick right here, slick as sliced bread. When I open that, the lights come on. And actually, these are actually not blue water. I actually bought those down at Bass Pro Shop. Uh, just little light strips. And I got them fixed down here with, so with a button. So uh, when, see this button right here? That turns them off. So when that lid goes down and hits that, it turns them off. And uh, if you tournament fish, you just gotta have that because you're gonna, and, and, and this is a rod, this is a rod box here. You can't see it, but that's got places to hold another 10 rods up here. Back here in the back, it's got uh, the places to put your butts in. So that's uh, not your butt, the butt end of the rod, okay? <laughs> so this is, you can hold another 20 rods here. So you can carry 50 rods, which the only guy I know does that is Tommy Biffle. But you can carry 50 rods. This has got the vent system in it also. Uh, a lot of the guys use this metal box to carry a lot of their fishing tackle. And they carry their rods on their side. I like to, when I'm in tournaments, will have four or five of backup rods that I might want to use with lures on them that I might not use today, but I might. And I'll have them in here because I can get to them quick and easy, real, real fast, real, real easy. I can get into this compartment. And what I use these side deals for, and y'all have seen it, and y'all be seeing it in this, I put plastic boxes in here, the little flat ones, you know, that are, uh, you know, eight by 10 inch boxes or whatever those are. I don't really know what they are, but uh, that I've got crankbaits in and spinnerbaits and trailers and trailer hooks and all kinds of stuff. I'll put in a you know, row of them. You can put two of those in here. So you put like two, four, six on that side, two, four, six on that side. So this is a very, very important box right here for me. Uh, when you shut it, you're turning the LED lights off. It's in there, that little button. That's a nice little trick that uh, I, I usually, you know, we didn't talk about on this box right here, but I usually don't carry rods in here. It doesn't have any place for your rod tips to go, but I use this to carry my rain gear. I carry my rubber boots so I can put on. I carry, uh, you know, whatever extra stuff I need in there. Uh, I carry an extra key switch in there in case something happens electronically on that put push button starter where I can just unplug one deal, plug a key switch in it and have a key start. I think everybody needs to have one of those if you got any of the push button starters. But uh, that's a great, that's a great box to carry all that stuff in. Okay, right here, this is just another tremendous storage box. It's deep, it's wide, and it's long. I mean, any way you want to look at it. You can carry a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I usually carry, again, plastic tackle boxes in there. I usually have eight or ten of them in there. I carry a lot of tackle with me. I carry stuff that I want to get too handy, and I carry stuff that you never know when you're going to need it. Some of those boxes I might not open in six months. But I might open, but have to open them at just the right time to, you know, to catch a big fish. All the boxes got shocks on them, so they'll stand up. Down, perfect. Great situation. Okay, up here where all everything happens. This is where. Oh, this is where it happens right here. This is my favorite part of a bass boat right here. I like to go fast. I like all of that. That's all fantastic. This is my favorite part of a bass boat. It's big and wide. You can move around up here. You can fish. You can just have a great time. Uh, got a Minn Kota Ultrex. Uh, that's the just an incredible trolling motor. It's got the spot lock on it. Uh, it's got, it's, I mean, it, it cannot bounce and break. I don't care how rough you get in because it's got the kickstand on there to hold it solid. When you go down, it's got shock assistance to raise it up and down. So if you happen to get old, when I get old, it'll be kind of hard to lift these things up and down. You can lift that motor up and down really, really easy. And it is a powerful son of a gun. I mean, it is a powerful son of a gun. 112, 112, that's a, that's a big one right there. That's a big one, 112. You can see I've got a real clean situation here. I've got my HydroWave. Kevin Van Dam probably made $15 uh, royalty off of that but I believe in them, a HydroWave. I've got a HydroWave up there and I got Kevin Van Dam's signature right there. 
I'll hang on to that, wait till he dies, sell it on eBay. Uh, I've got uh, my trolling motor is recessed, and this is a big deal right now. It's locked in, and you got everything right there where you can handle it easy. Another cup holder up here, which I use constantly. I use those big you know, Yeti type deals in those. You got no more places for your uh, more places for your your tools and your cutters. This operates these two buttons right here. Operate my power pole, so I never I need to power pole down. I simply hit that button, hit that button down, power pole up, hit that button over there. So those are very very easy. I've got two Garmin locators up here because I think this is the best place to have two. Uh, I've got one of them that I'm sitting and I'm usually looking at down vision or side vision or regular sonar. I've got another one and I'm using my uh, spotlight, my uh, live scope over there. Uh, again, you can see I've got my, my hydro wave down here. That allows, uh, puts the noise down in the water off of the hydro wave. And it's just, this is a work of art. Got some switches over here where you can run your lights and stuff. To be honest with you, I don't, this is a trim switch here. I do use that trim switch up here at the front. Some people use buttons for trim switches, but I use them for my power pole. But sometimes I'll use these to trim my motor up and down. That's what these are. You got you can run your area from up here. You can run your accessories up here. You can run all your lights from up here. But I want this front end of the boat to be as functional and yet as clean as it can be. Because I want I got my rod and reels up here. I normally have at least six up when I'm fishing tournaments not fishing tournaments, I might end up only having two or three rod rails up here. But uh, it's gonna be so to totally different for me how I fill this boat up with tackle, not fishing tournaments. But uh, we'll see what happens. And you know, I've just quit tournaments for 2000. You never know, I might be back in two, uh, 2020. I might be back in 2021, you never know. Uh, I just don't know. It's just, I'll depend on how much I miss them this year. So far, I'm not missing them at all. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, this is the front end of the boat. Uh, a Ranger Trail trailer, uh, I'll jump down there and we'll end with that Ranger Trail trailer. Uh, again, the Ranger Trail trailer has the Ranger advantage also. These boats are absolutely awesome. Uh, this boat retails, well, the $100,000 price range. Uh, after a year, I'll probably sell it for seventy five dollars or 78000 But So somebody might be able to get it for twenty grand, just like the, my 219 as soon as I get it back and get the wrap off. But as soon as I get the wrap off and refurbish, new carpet, new seats, we'll have that boat up for sale. Uh, but uh, as well as another shell boat, a uh, ranger that I've got up for sale. It's a show boat, my shell show boat. Uh, but anyway, this is all everything for the, the ranger. We got again the tie downs up front. I can't think of anything else uh, that I need to talk about up here. I'll jump down real quick and look at that trailer real quickly, and that'll be wrap it up on a walkthrough on my 2020, 2020 Ranger 521L with that big V8 Mercury on the back of it. All right, here's the other thing about here's the other thing about a ranger boat uh as you get older you appreciate this you see that little step right there you see that little step right there very easy to step on that and get down you got another step there you got a step right here on your ranger trail trailer you got a step right up here so you got one two three four steps just on your fender just on your fender because wherever you get ready to get in or get out of a ranger boat you want some place where you can do it easily and that's the reason they've got it this way they got another step up front it's got four over on the other side, doesn't matter which side you get off of. You got all these places to hold on to, here to hold on to. So, because these things set up pretty far off the ground, you don't want to get over there and be falling. Uh, all the built-in built -in gas tanks right there. It's all you do to fill that baby up with gas. Put it in right there, fill her up. That's all you got to do. That's it. Takes gas really, really quickly and easily. Uh, we're really looking at these trailers, you know. These trailers are, you know, got all carpeted inside, so if you happen to bump the inside of it, you're not going to scratch your boat. This trailer is wrapped. The trailer, this boat is obviously red. That's a red wrap on it for Shell Rotella gas truck oil. Uh, but uh, but you got carpet all in the side, so if you happen to bump that while you're loading or whatever, you're not going to scratch your boat. This is wrapped. These fenders are actually red. They're, uh, they're fiberglass fenders. Got lights you can see from the front, lights on the side. Great. And these are all LD, LED lights. Tremendous lighting. Uh, dual axle trailer. I can't remember what they call the hub, but the hub, you don't have to ever worry about, you know, grease them or anything. They got, I can't remember what they call it, but it's just an amazing system right there. This particular Ranger trailer, these are all armor coated, and so they won't scratch or chip or anything like that. You don't have to you get on dirt roads, gravel roads. We got 2.7 miles to get to my front gate, and you don't have to worry about your trailer getting chipped. I mean, it's just, uh, this stuff is just amazing. This is your parking brake, where if you happen to park on a hill, 
you just push that in the down position. That's a toe position when it's up like that. You push it in the down position and it absolutely locks it. You can park it on a hill. Like sometimes around in hotels and stuff where we park, we just, there's just not flat. It's not, and so we park on a gang like that and we always had to try to find a rock or carry chalks with us. And you can park that thing, you set that parking brake, you're gonna have it like that, it's not gonna roll. It won't roll, it'll just sit right there. Uh, road armor is what they call this stuff, road armor. And uh, this is the jack system on here. It's an amazing jack system. Once you lock that in, wind it down, jack your boat off the, the, your vehicle. Put it up there like lock it. It's right there, it's out of the way. You're not running into it as you're walking around. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever do anything about trailer hitches. You're gonna run into trailer hitches all your life. The old dance is gonna run into one once a month, probably. <laughs> but uh, your, 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 your tongue situation up here real quickly. Uh, it's got a safety in here, so it cannot open. Very, very easy to open them. Now you can jack that thing up, comes off really, really easy. Flop it down, put this in, it'll never come off. Here's a little trick that I do on my trailers. You see these little big, big clips right here? I clip those on to hook to because most trailer hitches, most vehicles, your, where you hook your chains is way back up under here. And you go up here and it's hard to find them and hook them up and it's hard to get them unhooked and your hands get all dirty and greasy. But you can take these right here and you put these on here. They're easy to hook onto. These, these are big, they're like 5,000 pounds or something like that. And you can hook into those. That makes a nice, easy situation. Here's something that Ranger did this year. This is a 2020 exclusive. They put a little deal right here to, where you, to hold, to hold your, your plug-in for your, your vehicle. So now that can't fall on the ground. And that, ha that happens, you know, sometimes, and, you know, but it can't fall on the ground, it's out of the way. Pull it out, and we'll plug it back in. That's all you do, right there. So, that's an easy situation there. The only other thing to talk about up here, uh, I just got a safety strap on it. The safety strap is here, so if for some reason the main strap that was holding it was to break. That safety strap goes over here and it goes to that, and that's all it is. Your boat cannot get off of this trailer. It won't fly off of that trailer. The system for jacking it up is a real simple deal. Real simple deal there, flip that switch up or down. Big heavy duty, you hear that? Big heavy duty stuff. Flip that up, tighten it up. You got a big oversized roller right here. Everything is like, what can I say? Just like the finest quality that you can get. I mean, just the finest quality that you can get. I'm sure I've forgotten a few things, but one thing just popped into my mind. There's a switch over there on the side. Let me just show you that real quick. Uh, there's a switch over there right under my Mercury controls that operates your live wells for your, to turn your live wells to, uh, to circulate. You can turn them to auto, you can turn them to drain, to empty, and you operate it all, you operate your live well system over there with that, one, with that one switch. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, can't think of much here on the, oh, on, on, and this is something I'd recommend right here. About forgot about that. I know, there's other things I've forgotten. There's just too much stuff on a Ranger boat to get it all in. You say, well, Jimmy, I'm not going to be swimming out of that boat. Well, you might go swimming and not intend to go swimming. You might be fishing with Bill Dance, and you're probably going to go swimming when you didn't intend to go swimming. But it's hard to get back in these boats if you happen to fall out. Particularly if it's the winter time, you got a lot of clothes on. I've got buddies that are getting a little. I'm not talking about Bill now, but we're getting a little bit, you know, and it's hard to crawl back in. So you, on any bass boat, if you've got a bass boat and you don't have a ladder on it, go down to the Bass Pro Shop, buy your ladder, put it on there. But, uh, of course, my kids swim off the boat. I swim a lot in the summertime when it's 100 degrees. I'll just jump in the boat, cool off, crawl back in. You've got to have a ladder on, on your boat. Uh, big LED lighting system. I mean, it is absolutely, I don't have them on, but it's amazing. It's amazing how how bright those lights are. They're just good ones. And again, your steps on this side. And here's your, here's your switch right down here. Your switch is right down under that seat. That, that operates your, li your, your live well right there. You can have it on auto, you can have it on recirculate, or you can have it on empty, which will drain it out. And that's about it. I am sure, without a doubt, that I have missed something in this walk around. But if you think, and probably what's crossing your mind is, my gosh, Jimmy, that boat's got everything on it but a kitchen sink. <laughs> and it does. And uh, we might figure out how to put one of those on if we think we need a kitchen sink. But the problem with a kitchen sink, it's 
where they put dirty dishes. So, no kitchen sink in my Ranger Bass Boat. Absolutely a state-of-the-art bass boat, the best it's ever made. I feel so honored to be able to fish out of a Ranger boat with a big Mercury V in the back of it. Guys and gals, as always, I love you.